Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, let's. Uh, happy. Is it Tuesday? I guess. Uh, happy Tuesday. I think today's Tuesday. Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, what am I doing? Yeah, let's start with the exercise. Let's just, uh, you know, arm exercise, I guess. Yeah. <sighs> okay. <sighs> All right. <sighs> okay. Ah. Ha 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 ha. <sighs> wow. Ha. Uh. Okay. Let's take five minutes break. It's been only two, three minutes. Okay, that's good. All right. Oh, yeah, let's take five minutes break.
Evet. Okay. Oh, it's cold. Today is quite a cold day. Oh, boy. Uh. So, yeah, happy Tuesday, everybody. And, uh, Let's see, let me get some water off real quick. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so today is Tuesday, right? And um, yesterday I made, recorded an, an episode, Human Energy episode, and I decided not. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, hit my toe on this foot of this chair. Ouch. Ah, happens once in a while. So, uh, Saturday evening, I also recorded an episode and I decided not to upload both either of them because, you know, it's like self cancellation kind of. And right, you go to social media, you post something, and you let, like the day later, you regret, you, you regret posting it in public, some of your feelings, so you get rid of that post, right? It happens to everybody, I'm sure, social media. So it's kind of like that. So human knowledge explanation is this, okay? Self-censorship is this, okay? Sometimes we go through some, we have some negative feelings, right? And catharsis, we get it out. We rouse up, write down something, we say something, we record it and post it on social media, right? But that's, sometimes that's like public urination. Negative copium, catharsis. That's kind of like a public um, defecation or fetulation in public, okay? So yeah, it's better to be removed from public view because those are too negative and we all, we all go through some negative times and have some negative feelings about some issues every once in a while. It's, it's just negative copium accumulation, like a day and night, good days, bad days, 
it, it's natural. Okay. So whenever I <laughs> realize the episode I recorded like the day before was too negative, I decided not to upload it. I put it in the my external hard drive. I don't erase it. Okay. I save it. So it's kind of like going to bathroom and then flush down the u urine and feces, human waste. Okay. Yeah. Because there's no point of displaying our metaphysical feces, metaphysical urine, negative feelings out there in public. There's like public urination, okay? So, so yeah, that's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is this. Sometimes I feel very strongly about an issue, like President Trump's Senate trial, for example, which was today, today was the fourth day of Senate trial. And we'll talk about that later. Okay, so plenty of subject matter error, and and so, but sometimes my feelings about the issue is too strong; it needs to be filtered. So, if you have farm fiddle head in the spring, uh, you some people sometimes yeah you can eat it, but you don't want to eat farm fiddle head too much raw. Okay, why? It's slightly toxic. So what you need to do is you need to boil it and change the water at least once. Some people change the boiler and change the water twice or thrice. Okay. Well I guess it depends on the what species of farm that is. Right? Fiddlehead in the spring. Yeah. So when we feel very strongly about an issue. Me personally, when I first recorded of expressing my feelings about that issue, my opinions, sometimes it's too raw, raw emotion. So I decided not to upload it. Okay. It's like boiling the fiddlehead farm and changing the water once. Sometimes if I feel still strong, next day I talk about the same issue, but my feeling is way too strong still. Okay. Decide not to upload it, okay? But the third time is charm, right? So third time, typically, yeah, uh, my emotion has calmed down, so I can address the issue without too much raw emotion. So yeah. then, oh yeah, next day I feel good about that episode and I upload it. That has happened many times in, in the past, okay? So okay, we take five minutes and then we we'll talk about uh, the trial of Donald J. Trump. <laughs> the Senate trial of Donald J. Trump. We'll talk about that, okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll take five minutes, okay, so. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, so yeah, uh, some. Yeah, I mean, now that I'm a lawyer, so maybe I can share with you some legal analysis. Nothing difficult, because uh, I'm kind of new in new as a lawyer anyway, baby lawyer, newbie, newbie neophyte, right? Yeah. But the little that I know about law, I share with you. Okay, so. Uh, so, Republicans, they are coming up with some defense theory of President Trump in the Senate trial. Uh, okay. Procedural defense, basically, they are saying it's too late to impeach because he's no longer president. Uh, very smart defense, okay, I didn't think of that. Well, first of all, I wouldn't be on the defense side of this aisle in the courtroom or Senate floor, okay? I'll be more on the plaintiff side, okay? Yeah. Personally, yeah, that, that's, that'll be my stance. That's where I would side with, I would side with Democrats in this occasion, okay? Anyway, so yeah, Republican side, the, the procedural defense, Basically, they are saying, yeah, you did not meet the deadline. It's too late to impeach him because he's not a president anymore. Okay. <laughs> Smart thinking, right? Yeah. Procedural defense, okay. But, and Democrats, they came up with very smart theory to respond to that defense. Okay. What they are saying is, I mean, some of those, they're solid people, right? State or federal level politicians. I think they're mostly very, very smart people, okay? Yeah, very impressive, okay? Some of their former professors of law school, right? So jurisprudence, the study of law, okay? So some of them are even constitutional law professor before they got elected as a senator, representative, okay? Yeah, constitutional law is like holy grail. It's like as high as it gets in law school professorship, okay? It's very coveted position in any law school, okay? So that's constitutional law, okay? So, yeah, anyway. So they come up with the response. Well, the thing is, if we allow that, okay, then they termed it one week exception, last week exception. I Then outgoing president can do whatever, commit high crime and misdemeanors in their final week. Because after one week, they be out of the White House, become a civilian, and if we do not, if we just let them go with their high crime and misdemeanor, then what's the point of having this impeachment law, right? Injustice will ensue. I didn't think of that. Okay, that was a very smart argument that they came up with, Democrats. Okay, so um. So they're saying, um, yeah, we cannot have this kind of precedent because in the future, any outgoing president at the, in their final week, they may commit high crime, misdemeanor, and get away with it. <laughs> smart thinking, right? <coughs> Very smart. I, I didn't think of that. They're smart. So that's the procedural defense and procedural response. And um, because President Trump may have pardoned himself already in secret. Nobody would be surprised. He's that kind of guy, right? Very self-serving, self-preserving, all right? So, okay, so he cannot brought into criminal court if he pardoned himself, right? Well, they may try to even, even after that, they may still try to go after him in a criminal court. Nobody knows. <laughs> it's based upon what President Joe Biden wants, okay? Because DOJ is under his executive branch. Department of Justice, they are employees, subordinates of President Joe Biden. 
they will have to do what he says, right? So he may order him not to press any charges. With them. So, so that's the procedural side. How substance, substantive side? Procedural law, you, you, two kinds of law, okay? Substantive law and procedural law. Procedural law is like a criminal procedure and civil procedure, like deadlines, right? Or court rules, like formatting guidelines. If you are you trial brief, how many pages it should be? Those formalistic stuff. There's procedural law, okay? Yeah, statute of limitation, right? Yeah, trial rules, and you have how many minutes to talk? You cannot exceed like two hours when you do oral argument. I'm just giving you examples okay so those are procedural law substantive law is where uh, it's more um, substance content of the case like did President Trump do something wrong okay regardless of deadline formatting guideline or page limit of this trial brief no no we are talking about that did President Trump do something wrong, something illegal. So that's the substantive law. Okay, substantive legal issue. So sometimes uh, procedural law and substantive law they kind of collide, conflict. Okay, and in jurisprudence there's this legal maxim: yes, yeah, substance over form. Substance over form. Substance is more substantive law is more important than procedural law. But there's legal maximum about that, okay? Probably based on English common law, maybe equity court. I mean English common law they have law court and equity court, right? What is it? Well, equity court is kind of like appellate appeal court, higher level, okay. Equity court. Law court is kind of like trial court, lower level, okay? Just one way to look at it, okay? Anyways, so yeah, substantive side, the plaintiffs, arg plaintiffs argument would be, well, first of all, who are the plaintiffs in the Senate trial? They may say America, American citizens, or even former supporters of President Trump, many of whom are in jail now. They lost their jobs, many of them damaged their reputation because they went there, kept on the hill, January 6, 2021. Okay? They are the ones who got the most damage from this whole incident. Okay. So President Trump may get sued in the civil court. Uh, he cannot pardon himself out of civil court. Why? Because that's the law. He can pardon himself out of criminal charges, but not in the civil lawsuit though. Okay, why? Because he's civilian now. Okay. He may get sued, okay. <laughs> he may spend next four years in courts. Civil courts, okay. Who knows? I don't know. So, substantive law is like this, okay? Did President do Trump do something wrong? That's for, first question. Second question. Did somebody got damaged? Did they lose their job? Did they go to jail? Did some people damage their reputation out of this whole event, January 6th event? Now, third question. Did President Trump cause that damage of those people? Is there some causational link between President Trump's wrongdoing and people's damage? 
Okay, so that, those are three questions. Okay, did he do something wrong? And did some people get damaged? January 6th. And is there some causal link, causation that link the two events? Okay, so th those are, that's the substantive law. Okay, in tort law, in the civil side, you know, to determine liability, and the criminal side, to determine culpability. The civil side, is the person liable or not liable for the damage? Right? Criminal side, is this person guilty or not guilty? It's about conviction. Okay. But in sanity trial, that's like mood court, that's like courtroom drama. Sanity trial, even if you get convicted, it's just a reputational damage, that's it, okay? He's not gonna lose any money, he's not gonna lose... He's not gonna go to jail. It's a slap on the hand, basically. That's what Sanitra is, okay? <laughs> it's a blow on his ego, okay? And also justice, sense of justice, but... Uh... But, I'm very impressed by either side of the aisle. Those many politicians are former lawyers, right? And um, and Mr. Rand Paul, he's not a lawyer. He's a, he used to be a doctor, right? But he came up with this procedural defense theory, right? And that was very smart. Maybe it was his employee lawyer's idea. I don't know. But it was smart. Kind of surprising because President Trump was very mean to Senator Rand Paul during the 2016 debate, but President, I mean, Senator Rampo is taking side with President, former President Trump. Maybe he, maybe is it because his loyalty, friendship, or is it because he wants to get re-elected in next Republican primary? His Senate re-election? We don't know. Okay. But, but he was smart. Procedural defense. Yeah, the argument is like that. Yeah, impeachment is about removal of incumbent acting president. So if, if this president is already out of White House, it defeats the purpose, okay? That was a very smart line of thinking, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll take five minutes break, okay? How interesting, right? Yeah, courtroom drama, political drama, okay? Coming together. Senate trial, okay. It's it's very intriguing. By far more interesting than what President Joe Biden is doing. <laughs> what President Joe Biden is doing. It's too goody goody, right? Just nice guy, kind of boring stuff, right? But President Trump, former President Trump, he's a villain. I he's not hundred percent evil, like any one of us, half and half, right? So there's some intrigue there. Okay, because many times he's just so wrong. That's why he's funny, and that's why he's controversial, and that's why he's hugely entertaining. That's Mr. President Trump, former President Trump, okay. What a character, right? Yeah. I might miss him, okay. Though, I do not support him politically anymore because what he did January 6th was unacceptable but in my opinion yeah I think he should be convicted okay I'm sorry I think he should be convicted in the Senate trial in my opinion okay but that's not likely at all the program party they only have six senators who might support, or seven senators, who might support co this conviction of former President Trump. They need 10 more. They need 10 more, okay? So they need 17 Republican senators to convict him, okay? Super majority, two thirds of 100, okay? So that's not likely, right? But uh, who knows, right? Yeah, we'll see. In a matter of a couple of days, okay? It'll be very interesting couple of days. Okay. 
courtroom drama, political drama, coming together, right? Senator. It's, it's good to be in America, right? <laughs> Something very interesting like this happens, right? Yeah. I, of course, we are sorry about seven people who died from January 6th, right? We are very sorry about seven people dying who are dead from this January 6th. So, President Trump. Uh, he might get some wrongful death civil suit, okay? Most likely he pardoned himself, so he... But he... <clears throat> in my opinion, uh, he's guilty of manslaughter. At least involuntary manslaughter, okay? I think that's, that's the uh, criminal law. According to criminal law, in my opinion, President Trump is uh, guilty of at least involuntary manslaughter. Seven people died from that incident that he caused. Okay, Th that's my opinion, right? But most likely he pardoned himself, so... Uh, whatever. But he may get some wrongful death civil on the civil side, in the civil court. The kind of people who are wronged by him, wrongful death, and they may go after his money. Okay, and a person's dollar value is yeah, person's life is priceless. Okay, but actuarial science, life insurance companies, they calculate that. Okay, how much is it? About one million dollars, sometimes ten million dollars. Okay, so President Trump may lose some money in some civil court. Okay, so let's see. I don't know. Okay, okay. let's take five minutes.
Okay. Wow. I'm just war warming up this room and this house. Ah. Uh, yeah, single digits kind of day. <laughs> Feels like winter. Which is good. So, every once in a while, we get mistreated, right? We <laughs> miss some mean people in the supermarket or something, right? And he stays with us maybe for a day or two. But after that, it disappears. Yeah, negative copium, they dissipate in time. Okay, so, yeah. It's as if like we were bitten by some kind of snake, poisonous snake, right? But honey badgers, what do they do? Uh, yeah, they eat snakes, okay? And they get bitten by venomous snakes. So after that, they got bitten by honey badgers in Africa. I saw some documentaries on YouTube, okay? They fall asleep, but they don't die. Honey badgers, they evolve so that uh, they're immune to poisonous snakes, venoms, okay? So yeah. Yeah, we meet some, I guess, some mean, rude people, right? Some people with issues, right? And we get mistreated sometimes, okay? Sometimes by random strangers. Supermarket on the street, some mean drivers, okay. But after a while, after a couple of days or a day, yeah, we recover from it, okay. So it just take time. Yeah, what do we do? We pray for them. Yeah, love for enemies. Yeah, we pray for them. Yeah, it's good therapy, human therapy, as opposed to psychotherapy, okay. It just goes away in time, so. Prayer is very good. Human therapy, humane therapy, okay. Forgiveness. Right? Yeah. Pray, for, pray for your enemy. That's what Jesus taught, right? Uniquely Christian, uniquely Jesus. Yeah. You don't get to see this in other religions. I haven't, right? Love for your enemies. Yeah, that's... Uniquely Christian, uniquely Jesus Yan. Okay. Yeah. I think he's son of God, okay. I've, I suspect he's indeed the real son of God. Okay. Yeah. I would it's simple lesson, moral rule, love you love thy enemy, right? Simple teaching, but very essential teaching for mental health. I don't know if they used to talk about depression, nowadays talk about the catchword is anxiety, right? But if you listen to Jesus, obey his moral rules, yeah, love your enemy, pray for your enemy. Anxiety, depression, yeah, they don't last very long, okay? Well, we don't call it at that. In human allergy, we call it negative copium. Okay, I usually cover a couple of days. It's just keep diet, exercise, right? Dance, martial art. Oh, they, they, they really help, you know. And um, it just goes away in a matter of a couple of days, right? So, yeah, no problem. And also, survive and thrive. Yeah, I wrote about that in the paper I'm writing. Yeah, I, I did write. About three pages today after work. Yeah. So, I went through it's like, uh, yeah, you have a job, right? <clears throat> but you work for your employer, right? That's the survive part. You want to pay the bills, right? Survive part. Thrive part is what you do in your spare time, right? You're enjoying your freedom. At work, you don't have freedom. You have to do what they tell you to do, right? That's what, what you get paid for. You're converting your freedom into money. All right? Your employer has his or her freedom on top of that. They have your freedom. So they take away your freedom. You have to obey at work, right? In return, they give you money. So you're converting your freedom into money. That's copium, copium conversion. Okay. Let me write that down because I did not write this yet. Okay.
내가 소매 에센스로 알아봐. 휴먼 알아지. We are creating a brand new science. That's all we are doing. Okay. Yeah. At work, our bosses convert our freedom into money, salary. Okay, we give them our freedom. In return, they give us money, salary, wage. Okay. That's what a workplace is about. And then we convert money into food, rent, electricity bills. Okay. Yeah. So we have spare time. That's where we strive. Okay, so we do whatever we find worthwhile thing to do. What will make us happy, right? Yeah. For some people, it means family, which is fantastic. Okay, future generation, very important job. Okay. For some others, it's about preparing for next career move. Right? Yeah. For some other people, it's volunteerism. Okay. Some others, it means self-education or hobbies. Okay. That's the thrive part. Happiness. Okay. At work, I mean, it's not freedom, so it's not exactly happiness at work. Okay. We have to do the things what other people tell us to tell us to do. Right. So that's the work Monday through Friday during the work day, right? And after that, we have work, we have weekday nights. After that, we have weekends where we spend our money, hard earned money. That's the freedom, freedom to spend our money, okay? During the workday, we give out our freedom by obeying our employers. In return, our employers give us money. And in our free time, we spend that money that we enjoy our freedom. We consume our money, we consume our freedom, we take our freedom back. Okay, so that's the copy and conversion theory. Okay. Right? Yeah, copium is something very powerful, something very beautiful. It is. So that's why this paper is taking quite a quite long time to write. It's been more than a month writing this paper. I expect it will be done in two weeks or so. Okay. But yeah, we can write another human knowledge paper in the future, okay, but uh, we want to write down everything we know about human knowledge so far, at least touch base on all the main topics in human knowledge, okay, so that's the goal, and it may take two more weeks, okay. Yeah, it's something very beautiful. Copium conversion. So very cool. Okay. So in this paper, yeah, uh, so swastika, swastika is originally Buddhist symbol. What does it stand for? I don't know, maybe circle, life, okay. It's very auspicious, good symbol in Buddhism, okay, but 
Nazi Germany, they stole that symbol and to use it as a, some kind of Nazi party symbol during World War II. Okay, it's very tainted, polluted symbol now, tainted by Westerners. Okay, but it's Eastern symbol, swastika. Okay. It was a good symbol, now tainted, okay? Just like rainbow. It used to be a symbol of hope, peace. Started from Bible, okay? Yeah, like, some over the rainbow, right? The symbol of youthful energy, hope, right? For LGBT ideology, they stole it. Mm -hmm. Swastika is like that. Okay. It used to be a symbol of life, whatever, in Buddhist philosophy, okay? But Westerners, they stole it. Okay? And we want to take it back. So, in this paper, I'm going to introduce the original concept of swastika, circle, okay? Yeah. But we are not anti Semitic. No, we love Jews. Jesus was a Jew. We admire Jesus. We are not anti Semitic, no. We are very much pro Semitic, okay, so. But we want to take our swastika back, okay, because it's a good symbol of Buddhism. We love Buddhism, I do, okay, I, I, I'm a huge fan of Buddhism, right? I, I love Buddhism, okay, India, China, okay, Tibet. Right, huge fan of Buddhism. Okay, Hinduism too. They're fantastic. We take five minutes break. Okay, no. Okay. Ha.
Okay. So, uh, let's talk about degree of freedom. Degree of, of freedom is a physical chemistry concept when they talk about second law of thermodynamics, entropy, okay? Degree of freedom, probability, combinatorics, right? But, uh, so, in copium allergy, right? Degree of freedom, yeah, copium conversion, you work, so, you sacrifice your freedom, you convert your freedom into money, right? And after that, you get your freedom back, because more money, more degree of freedom. Why? If you only have one dollar, you have very limited choices. What, do you, what can you buy in Walmart with one dollar? Yeah, some good food, like can of beans. You have so many choices. Pinto beans, black beans, kidney beans, chicken beans, chicken peas, chickpeas. You still have a lot of freedom that you can buy with one dollar. You can buy ramen noodles, right? Yeah. But if you have two dollars, now you have more degree of freedom, more choices what you can buy with two dollars. You can buy two beans of two cans of beans, right? Or you can buy orange juice, one bottle of orange juice with $2 in Walmart, okay? But if you have, have only $1, you cannot buy any orange juice bottle. It will cost more than $1. You can buy a bottle of water with $1, <laughs> but no orange juice, no, no kind of juice. But if you have two dollars, you can buy one dollar, I mean, one bottle of apple juice, orange juice, pineapple juice, because you have two dollars. Okay? So more money, more degree of freedom, more choices out there. Okay? Yeah. And some bad way to increase the degree of freedom is being amoral. Okay, you can ignore all the moral, ethical rules and do something not desirable. Right. What are the, some of those instances where, in my opinion, yeah, LGBT, tattoos, piercings, ultra internationalism, and uh, to name a few. Okay. I'm sorry to be <clears throat> like this, but in human analogy, we don't have time for political correctness, okay? I might be wrong in this kind of moral judgment, right? You don't have to agree with me, okay? But uh, I'm just expressing my opinions about those ideologies, that's all, okay? I might be wrong, okay? Yeah. Whatever. Well, something everybody would agree with, yeah, immorality, adultery, okay, adultery, and promiscuity, okay. or eat all you want, all you eat, yeah, okay, some will be study, okay, again, I'm sorry <laughs> if I offended you, but those are not important, okay? Well, they kind of are, but yeah, we'll stop talking about it, okay? So, yeah, another one way to kind of bad way to increase the degree of freedom, amorality, okay? Yeah. With more rules, less degree of freedom. Ethics, morality, it's about many, many rules, abiding by the rules. Same thing as law, legality, okay? So, but moral, ethic, called rules, they are not legal rules, so people have freedom to violate those ethical moral rules, mostly from religions, okay? So, yeah. So higher morality, ethicality, it means more rules to abide by, okay? So, anyway. But the third way to increase your degree of freedom, it is a good way. Can you take a guess? 
I'll give you two minutes, okay? <laughs> Maybe three minutes. Let me refill my coconut vodka, okay? So. Okay, what are some third good way to increase the degree of freedom, okay? Um, there could be many good answers, okay, but one answer that I know of is creativity, okay? And how do we, can we become creative? Well, actually, it's based upon education, okay? We agree Wolfgang Amazers Mozart is very creative musician, composer, classical composer, and Johann Sebastian Bach, also very creative classical music composer, right? Well, in fine art, so music is temporal art and fine art is special art, okay? Yeah, you have August Rodin, sculptor, and uh, Michelangelo, sculptor, also painter, right? And you have Salvatore Dali, surrealism, you have Pablo Picasso, cubism, and you have Vincent van Gogh. Is it impressionist or something? I don't know. So, all those musicians and artists, first they learned traditional way of composing music, playing music, painting, sculpting. They learned that. After they learned it, now they can be very creative. Okay. Mathematics, physics, same way. Likewise. Okay. Philosophy, is the same. Okay. First you learn what your predecessors have done, okay? After that, you can create your own stuff, okay? Business, same way. You learn how to do business as an employee. After that, you may create your own small business and you may grow very big, okay? Yeah. As an employee, you learn the ropes. As a student, of fine art, music, science, mathematics. You learn the ropes, how you learn how it's been done in the past. After that, you can come up with your own brand new things, right? Yeah, it's kind of like Jesus is saying, yeah, the truth will free you, right? And it's about learning the truth, education. After you learn the ropes, then you'll be able to create your own stuff. Okay? Yeah, let me write that down so that I incorporate it to this paper. This paper may become 100 pages, okay? Okay. We're done with human allergy, okay? Uh, I mean, for this episode, okay? Let's just relax. Last night, I watched this movie, uh, Deep Star Six. It's kind of, it's not exactly a B movie or A movie, it's kind of A, B movie, halfway between like A and B movie, okay? It's like not first class, second class, like 1.5 class kind of movie, okay? Director Mr. Mario Kazar. 
very famous Hollywood director, a Lebanese, North Africa, North Africa, Lebanon, Lebanon. Okay, so Lebanese American Hollywood film director. Okay, Mr. Mario Kaza. Okay, he made a lot of famous, movies, highly successful mainstream like Basic Instinct, Sharon Stone, and some others. What other movies? I don't remember. Was it Total Recall one of them? I don't know. Well, let's look him up. What other famous? My, yeah, he, he directed this movie, uh, Deep Star Six, okay? Uh, some good and bad in that movie, okay? So, uh... Okay, director, producer, Rambo, Terminator 2, Total Recall, okay. Basic Instinct, Universal Soldier, Showgirls, okay. Yeah, this guy's very much mainstream, okay, in Hollywood, back in the days. So he directed this movie, uh, Deep Star 6, it's about underwater, deep down, deep ocean exploration, okay. Some other films about that kind of theme. Yeah, James Cameron, Obese. Okay, yeah. Just highly commercially successful. Okay. But, uh, deep, deep Star Six is not a very well known movie, okay. But it was for free in Amazon Prime, paid membership, okay. So I watched the movie, and yeah, when I watched the movie, yeah, I can kind of see it's quite a uh, serious movie, professional, not B film, kind of amateurish. No, it wasn't that. Okay, how about my movie? Uh, the what? Therapy for Metaphoria, probably a C movie. Okay, <laughs> gentleman C kind of movie, totally indie, independent, low budget, shoestring. Okay, totally amateurish. But, in many ways, I, I like my movie, okay? And some of my friends did, kind of generously, too. Okay. Anyways, so, Deep Star 6, yeah, I could see the secondary the, the, uh, filming, cinematography, and all these actresses, and their acting, casting, I can kind of see it's a serious movie, so yeah, I ended up watching that movie through, okay? But then I realized other A movies in Hollywood, like Aliens, Alien 2 by James Cameron, they copied a lot of the face lifted copycats, okay? As big as James Cameron, okay? Or Jim Carrey. Those people, big Hollywood film stars, actors, Directors, writers, sometimes they watch B movies, like less or known movies, and they imitate without giving them any credits. And I voice my objection. That's of intellectual property theft. At least they should acknowledge that they imitated, they learned, got influenced by these lesser known movies at the end of the credit, film credit, okay? At least they should do that, okay? But they're Hollywood, okay? They're like not very well educated people because in academia, we make sure we do citation in a footnote or endnote, okay? So otherwise it's plagiarism, okay? But, but in Hollywood, they get away with it, okay? They're not academics. They're not very well educated people. It's like anything goes, okay? It's like jungle. So yeah, Matrix movie imitated heavily from Total Recall, okay? They kind of worry. Yeah, Matrix movie, they think they are so original, they are not, okay? And later on, this Wachowski, what a Wachowski brother, one of them became LGBT community member, maybe both of them, okay? Strange people, but they're not that original, okay, so. They cop heavily copied, imitated, 
plagiarized from Total Recall movie or the TV series V, okay, yeah. without acknowledging any credits, okay, at the end credit, did they mention them, other movies and TV shows that they imitated from? I don't think they did, okay. I don't think that's Hollywood tradition, right? And they need to change that practice because that's theft. At least they should acknowledge, yeah, we learned from this movie, that novel, that TV show. That should happen in Hollywood, okay? Or anywhere else. Otherwise, it's theft, intellectual theft. IP thieves, intellectual property thieves. Well, in, in this paper I'm writing, Copiamology, nowadays I'm just so busy writing about two, three pages a day because we have so many things to talk about. So I, I'm kind of lax on footnotes, citation, okay. But I plan to, after I'm done writing, I plan to go back and work on footnotes, like proper citations, okay, because that's kind of important. But it's supposed to be academic paper. Yeah, but that's more mechanical kind of job, so I don't want mechanical work hinder or slow down this creative work. Okay, so that's why. Yeah, two phase, okay, first just write it all down, second phase, Go back and do all due diligence, practice due diligence, exercise due diligence of citation, referencing, mostly web page on web pages, okay. Many times Wikipedia, okay. Yeah. What else? Yeah, this aliens too, right? Aliens too, aliens. Heavily, heavily imitated uh, this uh, deep Star Six movie. Okay, deep Star Six underwater exploration movie. Okay, Aliens Two by Mr. James Cameron. Heavily imitated from Deep Star Six, and Deep Star Six imitated from Alien movie. Ridley Scott, the original alien. That was like 1979. I looked it up, okay. And Deep Star 6, 1989, okay. Alien, Aliens, that movie, just like later, okay, so. Yeah, so they, they imitate from each other. So yeah, famous movies, many times, writers, actors, directors, they imitate from lesser known movies. And they can happen in this human art too, okay? What if some psychologists imitate from humanology without acknowledging humanology and just present to the public as if it's their own? Like some psychology professors in Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Stanford, would I sue them for violation of intellectual property? Well, I'm a patent attorney in paper, okay. Would I sue them? No. What would I do when, they, when I see them imitating our work? I'll just let them. Why? I don't have time, okay. So, yeah. I'm not going to sue them. What would I do? I'll pray for them. That's it. Yeah, let them learn from us for free, okay? Because I have no problem with that. Yeah, you or they, they don't have to side me. I'm giving this for free. Why? Because I got it for free from somebody else, okay? Like Jesus said, what you got for free? Yeah, give, give it for free. It's fair that way, right? Yeah, so people, they don't have to side me. No, let them have it. 
it's yours, it's theirs. I'm just a messenger, okay? Uh, it's not important that I become famous. Yeah. I do desire fame, but because I think it's gonna be exciting and fun, but it's not that important, okay? So. So humanology, all the ideas here, no citation necessary. I expressly wave it. Okay, yeah. Let them take it. But we recommend, don't present it as if it's, you came up with this idea, okay? Not you, but those people, whoever, okay? Yeah, yeah, just, you know, just acknowledge that you learned this from somebody else. Okay, they. Because I don't want I don't wanna want to encourage people to lie. Okay. They don't have to mention my name or website address. But at least in a small footnote. Just acknowledge that you got this idea from somebody else. Okay. You know, footnote. That's what I'm asking. Okay. They don't have to mention my name or website addresses. Just token of operation, that's all I'm asking, right? I don't think it's too much to ask. Okay. Alright, we'll take five minutes, okay? Yeah. Whatever.
Okay, let's have some fun, shall we? So, there's this X-File episode, Dreamland. It's about Area 51, okay? X-File, Fox Moldo, Dana Scully, okay, and um, the Three Stooges, <laughs> Lone Gunman, and the, the governmental employee, uh, I don't remember his name, okay? Great actor in the yeah the black ops higher uh, governmental official in area fifty one okay the dreamland one and two all right so yeah we acknowledge we we got some inspiration from them okay so let's say. We are writing a novel, short story. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Short film, short story, okay. So the story goes, okay, let's say there's this Harvard, Yale, Stanford, Princeton, MIT, whatever big school, Cambridge, Oxford, whatever, psychology professor, okay. And somehow he or she learned about this human knowledge series, okay? So, let's say it's a female, just to make it more interesting, okay? Let's, let's say she's a single female, okay? <laughs> so, she learned about this human knowledge series and she learned from it, but, well, you know, let's, to make it more interesting, let's say it's a guy. Okay, he's a man, okay. So he he kind of like studied the human rights series and find there's some value to it. And he learned from us and then reading our papers, who's out there for free. It's very unknown, humanology, this brand of particular version of humanology, okay. Very unknown, but it got some substance and content. It's real, real stuff, right? Good stuff. And, yeah, but our obscurity is partially due to political correctness because we don't abide by this liberalistic Democratic Party's political correctness agenda. We don't. Yeah, so. yeah, we're ignored by mainstream media and mainstream academia. Okay. So we are known, right? But let's say some psychology professor learned about this humanology, this particular brand. We are writing a novel, fiction, okay? Some plausible story, okay? Novel, fiction, movie, okay? Yeah, so yeah, he taught this psychology professor in Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, Oxford, wherever, okay? And he read, he studied us, okay? And he published some articles in nice following all this formatting guideline you know taking i mean making use of his phd candidates his employees okay so he called copium in he give it a different name and then he published an article you know peer review journal okay but he does not cite us, mention us. He just uh, take all the money and power and fame. Am I okay with that? Yes, yes. I'm, I'll be totally fine with that. Why? Because uh, I'm very Jesus and I'm Christian. It's money, power, fame is not very important to me. Okay. Um, I'm not a prophet because I'm not famous. I'm not a celebrity, okay? But I do believe I'm like pizza delivery boy or pizza, I love pizza, okay? Good stuff, right? Very delicious. I have two slices of pizza left in my freezer, <laughs> okay? That I bought like last year when I was traveling to uh, Kenai. It's five hours drive, so there's this wonderful gas station in the middle, okay? And they sell amazing pizza there, okay? Handmade pizza. 
from the valley to the Kinai Peninsula, Kinai city, city of Kinai is like five hours drive. In the middle, there's the gas station. Okay, some triple junction, juncture. And they have some pizza parlor there, and they make amazing pizza. Okay, so I bought like two boxes of pizza. Okay. And I ate some, and I froze some. Okay, so I have two slices of pizza left there. Okay. So I'm like pizza delivery boy, good stuff, human allergy, copium allergy, copium channel, whatever, okay. That duo dualism, okay. And it got some good content, okay. I'm also delivery boy, just text cab driver or mail delivery personnel, pizza delivery boy, okay. I'm just a messenger. Yeah, I see myself as a gas messenger, humble. Not a prophet. Prophet is somebody very famous. Celebrity, okay. They could be a false prophet or a good prophet. Whatever, okay. So I'm not in their level, but I'm just a delivery boy. But the message I'm delivering is the really good stuff, okay. But I'm just doing my job as a delivery boy, okay. Yeah. Still a boy at heart. Right? So if some people like Harvard, Yale, Oxford, Cambridge, Stanford, Berkeley, yeah, if they came into contact with this human rights series or paper, human rights papers, and they don't acknowledge us and pretend this, they came up with this idea and publish, become famous, money, power, fame, all to themselves, I'm okay with that. Why? Because I did my job as an unknown pizza delivery boy. I'd be happy to see that. Yeah. I'm not after money power fame. Okay. Yeah, I do desire it, but to me it's secondary. It's not primary objective. It's secondary, okay. If nobody does that, then I will have to do it, okay? My job is just to deliver this wonderful metaphysical pizza. Right? Wealth of knowledge. If it gets delivered to humanity, I'll be happy to see it. I don't have to take the credits. I don't need more power fan, no. All I need is, I have my job, I have my house, I have my car, I pay my bills, and I have vodka, whiskey, wine, beer, cigarettes, like light menthol, ultra light menthol, and ultra light Marlboro cigarettes, and lighter. I'm a happy camper, okay. Nothing will change. I have to keep writing, keep learning. No problem. Because in humanology, we do not depend on other people for happiness, okay? We do our own things, okay? We study, learn, teach, share our knowledge, what we learn from other people, and we discover new things, and we share it with others, okay? We do work, we pay our own bills, we are independent workers, hard-working, law-abiding citizens, or whatever country. We do our job, we keep on learning, studying, and teaching, sharing the knowledge, sometimes invention, brand new discovery. We share it, right? God is the only creator. We just discover, we are gold miners, diamond miners. We excavate, dig down, deep down under the ground. We find something, we bring it to the surface of the earth, and we share it with the rest of the world. Okay, job done, right? 
Money, power, fame is not necessary. Yeah. We are happy. We don't depend upon other people's perception for our happiness. Money, power, fame, not necessary. We can still be happy as an unknown person. I can be. Yeah, just this excitement of discovery itself. To me, that's good enough. Just this rewarding feeling of writing things down, what we have learned, what we have discovered brand new, first, time, first in time in human history. Excitement of discovery and writing them down and put it out there in the internet so that anybody can see 24-7. Anywhere in the world, space and time. The feeling that comes from exercising our due diligence, doing our small part. To me, that's enough happiness. That's enough happiness. The rewarding feeling, pro bono, volunteerism, right? The feeling that we did the right thing, clear conscience, we didn't hurt anybody. I'm a man, okay? Yeah, sometimes I look at women in supermarket. They do not, they do not like it, okay? They mind it. Maybe because I guess they don't find me desirable or attractive. So when I look at them, okay, yeah, because they're beautiful ladies, right? They don't like it, okay? So I'm no saint. Yeah, when I go to supermarket, I do look at women sometimes. Okay, I'm just a human being. I'm no saint. Yeah, so some ladies, they mind me looking at them. Okay, but sometimes I look at them. Okay, most of the times I resist. Right, but every once in a while, yeah, they just. Whatever, okay, so I look at them and they, they mind it. All right, they don't like me looking at them. That happens because I'm a man, and according to so many women, I'm not that desirable a man. Okay, so but I look at them, they don't like it. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right, but it happens sometimes. I'm no saint. Right? I, I don't get into any trouble just looking. So they stare at me back. Right? It's copium transfer, right? Yeah, they're beautiful. Okay, I look at them. So then somehow they notice it and then they stare at me back, expressing their disrupt, disapproval of me looking at them. Beautiful ladies, okay? They express that. They don't appreciate me looking at them, beautiful ladies. Sometimes, okay. So I feel undesired, okay. It stays with me for a while, like a day or two, okay. So, because I'm only human, all right. I'm no saint. Yeah, this feeling of undesired, all right. It does. Give some blow to my ego. Okay. It happens. How often? <sighs> like once a week. Okay. <laughs> when I go to supermarket, okay, so I'm only human, okay, I'm no saint. But I'm not a criminal, okay. Just looking, okay, so they don't like me looking, so I stop looking at them, okay, these beautiful ladies. No problem, but I'm no saint, right? I'm just blood and flesh, male, single male, okay, so, yeah. No big deal, no problem, okay, so.
Ja. So, metaphysically speaking, I'm just humble. Pizza delivery boy, okay. Let's say we deliver this pizza of human analogy. Let's say I'm a pizza, metaphysically speaking, it's analogy, okay. Some high people like Harvard, Yale, Oxford, Cambridge, or Stanford, high people, they order some pizza, right? So I'm a pizza delivery boy, right? And yeah, I deliver the pizza, they eat it, right? They are well fed, money, power, fame, they are happy, and I'm okay with that, okay, because I did my job, right? But I don't want them to just not acknowledge anything, okay? I don't, we don't encourage lying, falsehood, plagiarism, right? All we are asking is, when they write this paper in high Harvard, or Cambridge, Stanford, after they learn from us, just just one small footnote, okay? At least acknowledge that you got this idea from somewhere, somebody else, somewhere else, all right? Just don't present it as if it's their own, okay? They don't have to mention my name, website address. Just say, hey, yeah, I learned this from somebody else. That's what I'm asking. I don't think it's too much to ask, okay? Just some token of appreciation, okay? Because we do not encourage lying or falsehood or plagiarism. At the same time, we don't... I mean, I don't ask them to measure my name, website address, you no. Know. For at least acknowledge that you learned from somebody else, okay? So. That's what I'm asking. If they do that, I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah, if they have one small footnote, okay, yeah. Oh, I oh, I learned for this from somebody else in you know, a footnote, okay. That's what I'm asking, okay. They don't have to mention my name or some website addresses, okay. If they mention that one thing small thing, token of appreciation that they got this concept from somebody else. Somewhere else. Yeah, I'll be satisfied. Content, no problem, right? Otherwise, I will have to pray for them to repent. You cause me extra labor prayer, praying prayer for them, okay? Yeah, so yeah, I'm asking them, or oh, you, okay? Yeah, save me some labor, okay? Send me some label. Do the right thing so that I don't have to pray for you or pray for them, okay? I'm asking them, all right? Yeah. Okay. All right. But if they do that, just one small note. Oh, I got this from somewhere, somebody else, okay? Then, yeah, yeah. 100%, okay? Fast safe. Yeah, let them propagate this wealth of knowledge and human knowledge, this particular brand of human knowledge. Yeah, I'm all for it. I keep on writing. All right. If they don't, well, I pray for them. It will take me extra time to pray for them to repent, to be more honest, more appreciative, more respectful. All right. Otherwise, well, yeah. No matter what, I keep writing, keep studying, keep inventing, keep discovering, continue to do this all the way, as long as I live. Right. Yeah, I'm a happy camper. I work, study, I'm happy. Right. Yeah. I do desire money. Well, not money. What does money do? Okay. 
power, yeah, not necessary, okay, but fame is a good tool to propagate this wealth of knowledge, right? But power and money, not necessary, but fame, yeah, I, I crave, crave for it sometimes, okay? But it's not that necessary, the secondary goal, just the pleasure of discovering something new, to me that's good enough, pleasure, happiness, I can live by, I can live on with that, okay, yeah. So I work in my spare time, study, teach, right, share the knowledge. I'm a happy camper, yeah, it, the, I, I, it's good enough for me, right, yeah, so. Extra things like money, power, fame, luxury. I mean, fame, I do crave it sometimes, okay, but money, power, not necessary, right, so. Okay, I'm too drunk to continue in this episode, alright, so peace on earth, let everybody learn from each other. Holy Spirit on earth, may God, high almighty God bless us. Yeah, may God bless us anywhere in the world so that we live in peace, happiness, Healthy, respect, tolerance, diversity, good morality, ethics, wisdom, knowledge. May high and almighty God bless us. Amen. Yeah, in Jesus' name, Muhammad Allah's name, or Buddha's name, Confucius Lao Tzu's name, Zoroastrian name. All names, okay, so, Buddha's name, okay, all, all other original prophet's names, okay, yeah. mm? in Alaska natives, low 48 Indian natives, or Samoan natives, Australian natives, Papua New Guinea, Amazonian, okay, all their prophets, gods, goddesses' names, okay, so. It's all different languages. Yeah. Yeah, may God bless us all different religions, languages, okay. Okay, thank you. Good night. God bless you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.